Hey guys, this is Kirob speaking and today we are back in Automation Light Campaign V2 in Arana with Vista Automotive. And we are just about to punch through the 200,000 score mark. And um, yeah, we designed the Dash 02 with five different trims. Uh, very, very nice car. Super reliable. The, probably the most reliable sports car on the market it will be. And um, we coined a new term. It's the MM car. It's the mid-muscle. Anyway, today we are going to design a follow-up to the Vista Automotive uh, Family 95 or maybe... Uh, Depending on what car bodies are available, we might look into making a new hopper. The mini hopper is still shit, so I'm not looking uh, for follow-up for this one. Maybe we can put it, uh, put any kind of like hypercar into this factory instead. I don't quite know, but we have saturated that market anyway, so there's no with the dash and stuff. So there's not really a need for making a hypercar. Maybe something super budget. A quick look at the research panel reveals that we should take uh, have an eye out on the body department here because this one is soon going to hit six and with that um, it's pretty much done and I do want to increase the top end a little bit more and let's wow this is so expensive I mean we do have the cash uh, I do want to increase the top end more though because we have been running into a little bit of trouble revving higher than uh, 9,000 RPM. And that's not good. It's single overhead cam four valve technology after all, and Vista Automotive is the prime user of four valve technology uh, with just one camshaft. So we need to uh, make sure that we remain competitive into the late 2000s, where everyone and his brother uh, or mother is using dual overhead cams. And let's have a quick look at the sales, just because it's so damn impressive. This is green, okay, Ahana market is apart from convertibles. Ah, uh, yeah, okay, well, fair enough. Well, apart from convertibles, we are doing really well. And here, somehow, the city budget category is completely dry. Ah, oh, that's because all the cars are already sold in Ahana, I guess. And then in Gazmia. Oh, there are a few holes because we are selling to that market the at, yeah last, so not everything reaches them. So no convertible supercars, and uh, all this stuff, basically. Uh, that's a bummer. We could do a little bit better in Gazmia nowadays, but um, yeah, the cars are just sold out before they even get there. Uh, and another uptick in the economy, but this is a uh, yeah. Depending on how high this goes, this will be a pretty clear head and shoulders pattern here, and then uh, drop down towards the 2010 mark. It uh, doesn't look all too bright for the future, but I think it will remain on a reasonable level. So let's uh, advance a year and see how things go. We should be selling out of quite a few things here. Let's have a quick look. This is all all selling. Oh, wow. The hopper is sold out now, too. And the they cry for more superiors. Ah, we shall deliver. Superiors are always good to have. Um, because we can sell them at a massive markup. And I wanted to take a quick look at the R&D. Oh, shit. Yes, the body has gone a little too far. That means... Uh, let's amp it up to... Se yeah, let's go to 7 instead. That's all nice. And how's this looking? Uh, amping this one up even more so that it's faster. And this one can be amped up to four. Wow, these costs are... Uh, yeah, 300 million a month. No worries. All right, here we go. Another profit of 12 billion dollars. And taxes paid 3 billion. That's nice. Basically no change in prestige or reputation. We are still a little bit more heavy on the reputation than we are on the prestige, which is to be expected considering that we sell to all the markets. Uh, yeah, it's the truck driver's hypercar that doesn't sell too well. 
Anyway, uh, we pause it right here. 2003, that's, uh, that's a nice mark. So let's take a look at what we could design for a new car. We are looking for the family or uh, the hopper. Well, the good news is that we have found a very nice body for 2003 for the hopper. Just look at it. That's perfect. This is a very little overhang of all and can be made smaller. A pretty large size. And yeah, that, that does look like a hopper. But also, the bad news is that we have found a really nice car to make a family vehicle with. Uh, so, that is also looking very good. Also 2003. So, <laughs> yeah, I think um, 2003 is a good year. So what are we going to do? I think a new hopper would be more interesting right now than the family car. We can make it that next year, basically. Because it's still selling so well anyway. But uh, the hopper will need to have... I, and what is this body? This is a tiny... Oh, it's also 2003. There's so many good cars coming out in 2003. And this is something in between. Kind of city car-ish. Also small. Quite as small as this little bugger. And then, huh, well, look at this one too. Um, the land ship. Yeah, we could make a land ship, another land ship. Like the super heavy uh, utility platformy thing. Um, biggest car in the world. And that's also 2003. I think we need to be designing a few cars in 2003. But first up is the hopper. Oh, let's shape this one up and make this smaller. Is the cargo volume shrinking a lot? Ah, oh, it doesn't tell. Right. Okay, yeah, let's use this. And now, uh, what do we want to go with for the hopper? A monocoque chassis. We don't need the super high advanced stuff here. It's supposed to be cheap, after all. Not super cheap, but uh, reasonably cheap. And we want to replace the mini hopper with this one as well, so we want to have a super basic version. And uh, that means that we want to make a front transverse all-wheel drive, I guess? Make first and struts. Yeah, we do need to use McPherson Struts because that has higher off-road capability here. And oh, there's so many options. Uh, we want to go with coil. Solid axle coil. Just straight up plain uh, steel panel material and grills. All the grills. And tasty shit brown it is. And we are going with transverse all-wheel drive for this one to make it super off-roady. Oh, for the engine, we need a little bit of grunt. What did we do for the last thing? Was that some kind of crazy 3-liter inline 4 or so? I think we could use this. Yeah, yeah, let's let's go with this. <laughs> this is crazy. 3-liter inline 4 engine. Uh, very smooth. Very smooth and neat. Very low cam profile here, or it's below normal cam profile, so that we have a nice sloping downwards torque curve, uh, which makes it super easy to drive or to get to get started from a standstill. For this one, yeah, I would think 14.2-ish range, 14.0. We don't want to. Uh, to slurp too much fuel with this one. People who are buying it are not necessarily uh, capable of paying the, the heavy price of a super slurpy car. But I think we can get up the reliability a lot by going to plus 10 in the fuel system instead. And for once, the short cast header should do. And this is about as far as we can go. The reliability starts dropping off beyond 5,500 rather strongly, and there, there you see the big break in it. Uh, we don't want to go beyond that. I can accept it. Uh, this is a car which really needs reliability, so I'm tempted to go 
beyond the 78 here already. And strangling it just a little bit gives us this nice very high torque down low which is very important for off-roading and then a nice sloping down torque curve which means that uh, you don't have to change gear that much for this yeah, I, I do think the automatic gearbox will be helpful here uh, let yeah we have put so much so much stuff into this seven quality that's all good. Let's go with seven ratios. That's good for off-roading, I mean. Oh, uh, if we go... What? <laughs> yeah, the first three gears top out below 40 kilometers an hour. <laughs> uh, very impressive. And let's choose a manual locker right here. That will help a lot for off-roading. Okay, so now we have two hundred fives at ninety-five profile on here. It can go slightly larger. Let's see. This is now at ninety profile. I think that's pretty good. I don't even know if it needs that wide tires, but um, one ninety-fives instead. This gives us what profile? Ninety-five. Yeah. Oh, this is looking good. It's not too heavy a car, so we don't need super wide tires. Definitely steel rims though, otherwise they will shatter in no time. And a beautiful thing with this is, uh, this engine, the 3 liter inline 4, is that it's so massive, it's, it is its own heatsink and radiator basically. Uh, not too much of uh, power density in this one, so it's easy to cool. And that means we only need 106 kilojoules a second, or kilowatts, um, of cooling. And let's give it three times that to um, push our... Oh, shit. This body is terrible for aerodynamics. Wow, it's almost a square meter effective area already. So we're going to 1.1 square meters. That's a lot. This is draggy. We can start out with a five-seat option that leaves enough cargo space and a basic interior at high quality, which is very much Vista Automotive style. And let's say basic. I think basic will do. Although 400, maybe we want to have a super basic version. Oh yeah, we want to replace the mini hopper as well. So let's make a bare bones version of this car. But we are going to use advanced safety. Oh, uh, that will help a little bit. Maybe reduce the the quality by three, basically. So three in the pot, which will make it a lot quicker to engineer. And for the springs, I think there are a few more options now. So if we go progressive and gas mono, then we have our off-road sway bars that's something new uh and how's the offer oh yeah offer it's at 62 almost the tuning here is pretty much perfect for the tires slight bottoming out which we don't worry about because we put this one to the top anyway to get the highest off-road rate uh, rating possible uh so this is all looking pretty nice the only thing that is a bit on the uh on the experimental side right now is the roll angle. We don't don't need that that harsh a uh, stiffness here. We yeah uh, get get rid of this. Ah, oh, this is much better already. Saves us a little bit of weight, and uh, yeah, I think this is already pretty good. Let's take a look at the brakes. Slight overperformance here, but we do need overperformance for the off road. Don't forget that. I want these two pairs to look like a copy of each other which has been scaled. That gives the best drivability or the, the best balance of all. Because that would mean that at the same brake input without any further tuning, at the same brake input, they would lock at the same point in braking. Um, that's 
pretty decent. And what more do we have? So the gearing was decent, I think. Let's see. Wheel spin is low. Ah, oh, wheel spin is low. So maybe we can go even lower. That did cost us a lot of drivability, though. Not a fan. Yeah, this is better. And uh, we reach... <laughs> we, uh, we reach 100 kilometers an hour at uh, maximum RPM in fourth gear. <laughs> that's that's uh, rather bad. Compared to the gent or the dashes... It's not quite the same thing, is it? All right, let's have a quick look at the markets. And this is exactly as we would anticipate. Although, oh yeah, well, but this is basically the budget version of this car. Um, and it's pre-factory, so it will get cheaper than this. I wonder why we don't have a better score, though. Ah, anyway, good enough. Let's uh, produce... Oh, let's first take a look at the Achan market. Oh yeah, here it's doing pretty well in in the off-road market. <laughs> the, the super base version. And they can barely afford it. Oh, I think we are all good. Let's name this stuff and then create the first clone. It's all named in the standard fashion. So let's see what we can do for a kind of premium trim. I want there to be a large enough difference in between. And that is what we have been doing since the dawn of time, as you can see from the familiarity rating. So this one is going to be a premium interior now. And we get a standard CD in there. That is very premium. And what? Why is it so bad? Oh, because it's not affordable. This is Ahana after all. So in Ahana we would have to look at off-road premium instead. Let's just switch those markers around. Okay, this one didn't need much tuning. But I'm really worried about the performance of this thing. Drivability is super low. And... It doesn't really hit the markets, it should. Uh, let's see in Gazmir. Well, here it does. But just scores 100. I wonder why that is. I, what, what could I uh, have changed to make it better? Uh... Even the power dist... Ah, oh, let's check out the power distribution. Is that co corresponding to the weight distribution right now? Ah, uh, no, not quite. Okay, we need a 5248. And the off-road likes best when it is right in the middle. And we round off the lineup with a luxury version of the whole thing. That's it. Wow, luxury infotainment, that is crazy expensive right now. We put a premium sat-nav in here and drop this by two. It should still be pretty good. Uh, no one can afford it in off-road anymore, but that is to be expected. And average reliability has been dropping a lot as well. Oh, this is super heavy. This is actually a super heavy car. Do we have any performance penalty for... Drivability, uh, performance, nope, no, oh, no, that's, that's still fair. Okay, not much more we can do with this one. Uh, 1.93 tons. I think this will be only topped by the next car I'm going to design. This will be fun. All right, uh, but the VA Hopper 03 is going into engineering now. Uh, because, well, not much we can do about it. Um... Let's give it... Ah, uh, this is good if it's reliable. So, let's give it five years. We do have the... The monies! Uh, of four and... Eleven? Yeah, four and eleven. And the engine... <laughs> yeah, there's not much we can do about it to push it. Um, so, zero funding, 100% reliability. This is so easy to engineer nowadays. Let's take a look. We have... Wow, okay, the average familiarity uh, cutting down of the engineering time is 50%. Oh, massive. 
The Hopper factory is a large factory on a huge plot. And we produce it with an i6. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, yep, nothing to change here. This is all good. Whoa, that's expensive. 1.1 billion just for an upgrade here. Okay, a little bit better. So the luxury version actually sells as a non-luxury version, more or less. But the off-road premium segment is something that I want to attack with the next car. Uh, that will be fun. Markups. Well, markups, I think, should be 30% for this one. It should be 60% for this one, maybe. And like 90% for this. And then we'll see once the car is on the market if that is actually a, a good strategy or not. It will cost us 2.4 billion! This is just as expensive as the dashes, wasn't it? Or somewhere around there. Uh, well, yes, but then if you look at this number, nine months! It's all smiley faces again. And let's sign it off. And I think this concludes today's episode. Uh, in the next one, I want to have a follow-up version to the Mini Hopper. And it will not be so mini, I guess. Anyway, hope you enjoyed, and see you guys next time!